Little Red Wagon, definitely a song full of attitude and lots of fun. We're excited to have Miss Presley Sullivan Love in the studio, and she is here. Presley, Hello. how are you? I'm good, how are you? Doing good. good. You drove today. How long was your ride? It was a little over three hours or oh four gosh. hours or something crazy yeah. like that. <laughs> Did you sleep in? I slept for 40 minutes, Okay. and then I woke up to have like a seatbelt cut across my face. Oh my gosh, <laughs> well, it's, it's gone now. You look yes. great. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for being here. You have, before we get started, I'll let you describe who you have with you, who you brought along. All right. Well, I brought my mom. She comes with me everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I brought my guitarist, Kent Crane, and his son, Evan. Mm -hmm. And then I brought Tony, who comes with everybody. Yes. He knows everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tony is here. We're glad to have him here. And I know I have family and friends and fans listening, so hi to y'all. Yes. Yeah, so thank you for being here. So Loganville is where you are from, right? Yes. I've lived mm -hmm. in Loganville for years, probably since I was like six or something like that. Mm -hmm. And talk about you growing up. I mean, not necessarily about the music. Did you grow up being bubbly and like you are now, or how, how was your yeah, growing up for you? My mom always described me as being really bubbly when I was little, and my dad and my stepmom described me as that way as well. Mm -hmm. Like, I would, uh, when I'd be at my dad's, apparently I would always want to like stand on the stairs, and I would be like, ladies and gentlemen or something crazy because I couldn't say gentlemen and I'd always like sing for them or I remember like my mom was sitting on the couch and I walked out of the this is embarrassing I walked out of the bathroom and was like acting like a grown man that had just used the bathroom doing something crazy <laughs> silly and she was like dying laughing so I, I think I always just wanted to like make people laugh and just be silly and mm -hmm. Stuff like that. So that translates to the stage? Yeah, so I guess you're so. on stage, you're funny and I guess so. Mm -hmm. um, when I get on stage, uh, I've, I've been told that like a light switch kind of turns on because I'm more like kind of mellow, um, laid back. But when I get on stage, I like to bring a lot of energy on the mm -hmm. stage because I feel like bringing energy engages more people. Right. So. Uh, I want to talk to you about music now, how music started for you. Was it always something that was there? It was. Um, I mean, for as long as I can remember, I've always, always wanted to sing or act or dance or something to do with music mm -hmm. or performing or whatever. Um, and growing up, I watched my dad play in a band, and my mom would sing around the house. And, I mean, like I said to you before um, we got on air, I, I can't remember exactly what sparked it for me, and I'm just going to assume that it, it was seeing my dad perform. Mm -hmm. um, because my whole life, all I wanted to do was sing. So right. that's just all I can remember is wanting mm -hmm. to sing. I can remember being like... 10 years old and crying because I wanted to be famous Aww. and I was like I don't know how I'm gonna do this but I, I you know uh, as I'm getting older I realized that the only thing I can do is just pursue my career and do what I love and share my passion with people and mm -hmm. It's not even about being famous, although that would be, like, amazing. It's just about, like, sharing what I love with everybody else. Right. You, she has personality. Mom, you can probably attest to this, too. Like, I could see her on, like, a sitcom. You know, like, being an actress, too. <laughs> You're so cute. And, I would love to act. I've always wanted. I used to take acting lessons, but my confidence isn't as much in acting. You know, I'm, used, I'm more used to singing. Mm -hmm. But I would love to branch out into acting, too. Yeah. Or just anything. do it all. Take on the world, right? <laughs> anything. Yeah. So you, I was reading your bio, which is really interesting, all of the things already at your young age. You'll be 18 tomorrow, right? Yes. So happy early birthday. Thank you. But three years old, singing Shania Twain. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We, I, well, I call that my potty training song. Because <laughs> apparently, this is embarrassing too, but why not? Might as well just go ahead and say it. Um, when I was potty training, <laughs> I went to the bathroom by myself, and I came out, and I was like, man, I feel like a woman. Oh, and my gosh. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I don't even remember doing that, mm -hmm. but my family hasn't let me live that one down yet. Oh, if so. only that was on video. Oh. Seriously. <laughs> That's awesome. So, you I had music around. What kind of band was your dad in? What? They they were in a band called Pickle when I was little, mm -hmm. and then they had a band named Redneck Blonde, and they kind of did they do covers in Redneck Blonde and stuff. And Redneck Blonde is still around, but my dad moved to Florida. Okay. Um, but Pickle, they had like original songs, kind of like you say like rock kind of. Yeah, they were sort of like alternative rock and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, I, I don't really remember you know what mm -hmm. they were doing in Pickle because I was so little then, mm -hmm. but. 
Yeah, stuff like that. That's cool. So do you see what you grew up from what your mom listened to and what your dad played? And uh, do you see that music still kind of influencing what you do today a little bit? Maybe a little bit. I mean, I honestly, I didn't even think about that until you just said that. But I guess because my dad did used to kind of sing kind of the rock maybe a little bit. Um, I don't think he ever really sang country, though. Mm -hmm. um, country is just something that as I got older, you know, trying to figure out who I was, I... Just, I found country and I fell in love with it. Right. So maybe that would be something more from just me being myself, but I mean, I could see other little influences from maybe things my parents listen to. Yeah, who are some of your musical influences? Who do you like? My musical influences would be, of course, Miranda Lambert. She's <laughs> like my idol. I love her so much. But I love Blake Shelton and um, Shania Twain, Rachel Farley. Anybody who, any girls who have the attitude, I love that. Carrie Underwood, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure I'm forgetting people, but I mean, I love, honestly, all the country music artists. They mm -hmm. all inspire me because they're following their dreams, and that's what I want to do. Yeah. But um, those are my main people that I follow. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So 11 years old, I think, is when you started to write, right? Yes. I, I wrote, like, in elementary school, I would write, like, stories. And then as I got a little bit older, I started making songs. Um, and, of course, the songs that I wrote at first were just horrible. I mean, I have notebooks at my house of songs that I wrote when I was really little. And I, my thing, and I've always done this, which I'm so happy I did this, is I would date every song. So I know what year that I wrote, like, all these horrible, crappy songs. <laughs> but it's really cool to look back and see that because some of them aren't so bad for being, like, 11 or whatever. But... Mm -hmm. Um, as I got older, I guess my song started to get a little better, and you know, I, I still have so much improving to do on my songwriting, mm -hmm. but I mean, I'm, I'm pretty proud of the songs that I have, or I think they're decent, um, yeah. but of course, I, I'm excited to improve on my songwriting. They're better than decent, I have to say. Thank they're you. really good. They're Thank really you. good. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about songwriting in a little bit, but I want to kind of continue on your story. Um, so at 15, you had, uh, I don't know if you were approached, I don't know how it came out, but you signed a management deal, right? Yes, I did. Um, I signed with the management company, Polaris Music Group, and I, I agreed to sign to be like an indie pop artist because at that point I was like, you know, I'm willing to do whatever I have to do to kind of like get my way in the door, mm -hmm. get my foot in the door. Um, and at first I was okay with it, and you know, they were great people, um, but the more that I went on, I started figuring out who, figuring out who I really was. Mm -hmm. And that was a big thing for me because for a while, I was having a hard time like figuring out who I was and who I wanted to be as an artist. And um, But the more I went on as an indie pop artist, I realized how much that my heart belonged to country music. Because before I signed, I was singing country, but I thought I would be okay doing pop because I liked pop music too. Mm -hmm. Um, but then having to like dress a way that I didn't like, sing songs that weren't necessarily my, my flavor, mm -hmm. um, and just kind of be somebody that I wasn't, I just wasn't, I wasn't having fun. Right. Um, because to me, it is so important to be who I am. Like, I'm all about being me. If I'm not being me, then I don't want to do it. Right. Because you're you, like, you're the, you're the best person when you're yourself, you know what I mean? So, I mean, we split ways after two years, and then I went right into doing my own country music career, mm -hmm. and that's, I'm so happy I'm doing that. Yeah, that is so cool. So, already in your short lifetime, you've done so much, it seems. It and seems like it. I can't yeah. even remember half of it, because my memory's so bad, but <laughs> I mean, I'm, me and my mom, I feel like we've been going everywhere doing all this crazy stuff. I'm mm -hmm. really, like, blessed to have been able to do what I've done so far. Yeah, you play guitar as well, right? I do. I'm not like a pro at it, but I'm learning, you know, and I'm practicing and I, I hope to be really good at it one day. Mm -hmm. How long have you been playing? I've only been playing for like a few years um, and recently, you know, I, I play more. Like I, I use my guitar a lot when I'm writing um, and then when I take it to the studio, they, they tweak it and make right. it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But um, and I've played out at a couple of shows. I'm trying to build up my confidence on the guitar, really. Mm -hmm. I just haven't gotten quite there yet. It sounds like you like to dance around and perform, too. Yeah, right? I do. So maybe the guitar 
hinders a little bit. I don't know yeah. how you feel. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, part of me feels like when I'm playing the guitar, I can't give all to my vocals, which mm -hmm. isn't, it's not necessarily true. I mean, people do it all the time. Maybe that's just something I'm telling myself as right. an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do enjoy playing the guitar, though. Like, when I have played out and I played the guitar, I had a lot of fun, and it feels cool to play the guitar and sing. I'm like, it feels like I'm achieving something mm -hmm. when I do that. But um, I'm eager to get better at that as well. Yeah. Well, speaking of guitar, I want to talk to your guitarist yes. right now. His name is Kent. And you're here on Kent Road today. Yeah, <laughs> I think we talked about that. Yeah, we're going to take that sign home with us. Tony's going to get it down for me on the way out. Yes. So how long have you been playing music? I've been playing about 25 years. Wow. Yeah. yeah all around Atlanta and uh, different rock bands. And, mm -hmm. and now, actually, I was in uh, Redneck Blonde with, with Presley's father and our friend Mark Myers. And uh, Redneck Blonde's still going on. We play around town all the time, and, and lately we've been lucky enough to, to back Presley with her shows, and we, we have a great time. It's a high-energy, <laughs> fun show, and I, I encourage everyone to come check it out. Yeah, so you've gotten to, uh, at least somewhat, see her evolve as an artist. Describe Presley on stage and, and her style. She's so right about, about flipping the switch. Because when you talk to her, she's like this sweet little girl, a little shy. But, and, but when we get on stage, it's like, yeah, you flip the switch and it's wide open. Mm -hmm. uh, super comfortable all over the place. Kills it vocally. You know, it's, well, it's you. really, well, you're welcome. <laughs> and she's, yeah, she's a great performer. And especially to, to just now be 18 tomorrow, way ahead of her time. And it's just, and it's just a blast to right. be able to play with her. That is awesome. It's just, you sound like you have a great group around you. I do. I love anybody that I've gotten the chance to perform with or play with. They've been amazing, and I have so much fun with anybody that I perform with. But I love Renick Vaughn. Mm -hmm. They're amazing, and like I said, they're like family to me. Yeah. So it makes it even more fun and more comfortable to get up there with people that you feel like is your family, and you get to have fun and experience that moment with them. It makes it so much better. Awesome. Well, can we hear a song? Yeah. Sure, we'd love yeah. to. Tell us about this first song. All right, the first song that we're going to do is called Catch My Name, and it's one of the songs off my five-song album, Full Grown Country. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I hope y'all enjoy it. All right, take it away. I'm a waiting 
Awesome job. Yeah. Presley Sullivan live here in our studio. That was her song, Catch My Name. And I just have to say, I, don't, I know me and your mom, I had my foot tapping the whole time. Everybody <laughs> awesome. was smiling. Good. You just have a personality. I just love it. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. You. You're welcome. So you're, you have taken your music so seriously. I can tell from all the things you have done. You wanted to graduate early. That yes. was important to you so you could go ahead and give it your all. Tell us about that a little bit. Yeah, I went to Loganville um, High School until my junior year. Mm -hmm. And about halfway through my first semester, um, I talked with my mom and we decided that I was going to switch over to homeschooling at Faith Academy. Which I'm so glad I do, did that because I love Faith Academy, first of all. But having to go home after school, I had homework from the time I got home from school to like I went to bed. So I didn't have time to practice guitar like I wanted. I didn't have time to practice vocals like I wanted. If I had a show coming up, it was so stressful. If I had anything I had to do, I would get so overwhelmed, maybe because I get overwhelmed easy, I don't know. <laughs> but like having to do so much and try to cram it in and trying to focus on my schoolwork all at the same time, it just got to be too much for me. So getting to go to homeschool, you know, I had so much more time during the day to do my schoolwork and get that done on my time. And then I had more time to focus to my music. And I also graduated a year early, and wow. now I'm done with high school, and I have a lot of time to focus on my music. Mm -hmm. So, And you're so lucky that you had your parents there to help support that decision. Yes, I am. I am. I'm really glad that they were supportive of that. I mean, my family has always been so supportive. I am so blessed with the family and the friends, and even the fans that I have. I mean, they're amazing, and um, they make this possible for me. And my mom, you know, she has done so, so much for me. I am so lucky to have her. Aww. And, um, you know, even my dad, he lives in Florida, but he's always sharing my stuff or doing what he can or coming in town to see me perform. My grandparents, I mean, everybody, they're all so supportive, so mm -hmm. I'm lucky. Yeah. Is somebody driving through town y'all were talking about? Yeah, my grandma, she's driving <laughs> through town. My grandma and my grandpa, I call them Mimi and Papa. Um, they're coming back from Florida. They said they're in Tifton, so yeah. hi, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta give them a shout out. Yes. Yes, yes. All right, so uh, you have been playing a lot around and about. You gave me a long list of some of the places that you've been playing, which yes. is awesome. Talk about the music scene that you are a part of. Is it in the Atlanta area? Or? It's pretty much in the Atlanta area. Um, as I told you, I performed at Wild Bill's last weekend. I actually had my second show there. That's in Duluth. And then the Craze Tavern is in Duluth. And I have a show on March 6th, I think. In, yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> in Winder at 9 at Top Dog Tavern, which I'm looking forward to. It'll be an acoustic set, I think, for three hours or something like that. Awesome. So it'll be a good show. Um, and just places like that. I've done some benefits here and there. and um, But mostly I've stayed around the Atlanta area. But I hope to get out of the state or, you know, sometime. And getting anywhere is an improvement or an achievement. So mm -hmm. just any exposure is good exposure. Yeah. Well. If it's positive exposure. <laughs> if it's good exposure. <laughs> yes, yes. What's your, been your favorite show you've done? Wild Bills would have to be my favorite just because I'm such a fan of performing with the band. Um, it brings so much more energy, and I like how the band, like, rocks up my music. I love mm -hmm. that about, about them. And um, we just have so much fun on stage, and I feel like the more energy there is, the more the crowd can engage with you. So that's what I like the most. Yeah. Let's talk about songwriting now. I love to talk to writers because okay. it's different for everybody. Talk about how we are, we know you started around 11, mm -hmm. right? And so obviously it's changed. You've grown as a writer. Yeah. Probably what you've r written about has changed yeah. too, right? Yeah, like I can um, remember, like, as a lot, like I said earlier, being little and writing. Um, and I talked about this on Just for Fun Radio, and they made fun of me, so I really don't want to say it again. But like, <laughs> Come I, on now, you have to <laughs> I wrote a song called, like, The Boat Man or something, because I was at my dad's house in Florida, and I was sitting there looking at the ocean, and a boat went by. And I was like, oh, the boat man waves goodbye, and he sails away, or something. Like, that was my dumb little <laughs> song that I wrote. And I wrote about, like, fairy tale. Like, I, I, looking back at my notebooks, which I do often just to make fun of myself, like, I'll see a song, something about, like, a girl in a fairy tale or, like, floating on a cloud or, like, something that a little girl would write about. Um, but as I got older, older and started to actually experience more things, you know, I got to write about that. But the weird thing is, is that I try to write from personal experiences. Like, Full Grown Country is something that I wrote 
how I how I view myself really. Mm -hmm. um, and gasoline was definitely inspired by a few things going on. Mm -hmm. um, and walk away. That's probably my most personal song on my album. But um, catch my name. I was just like sitting on my front porch with my guitar, like strumming a few chords, and I and I was like, this sounds kind of cool. And I literally just pictured a story in my head. And I wrote a song about it. I wrote That's a cool. song about what I saw. Yeah. So some of my songs aren't necessarily like based off a true story, but just kind of like something that I could envision in my head. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I used to write stories in elementary school, so maybe <laughs> that has affected me a little yeah. bit. Um, or I kind of take a personal situation and then I change it around a little bit to make right. a song off of it to make it more interesting. That's kind of what I did for Karma. Mm -hmm. um, it was. It had like personal emotions in it, but it wasn't necessarily a true story either. Right. Yeah. So my songs come from different things, really. Mm -hmm. What would you say is your writing process when you sit down to write? I, I'm so weird. I, I don't even have one. I'll be like, this is how I got gasoline, okay? I obviously was going through a lot, right, in that time, but I was driving and I was like, gasoline, oh my gosh, that would be like the awesomest song for a name. I'm writing a song called Gasoline. I go home and I text my best friend. We were both going through a lot. And I'm like, girl, we need to write a song together called Gasoline. Within 10 minutes, I had I always text my songs on my phone. I don't know why I do that. I, like, type them up on my phone. And within 10 minutes, I had the whole song texted up on her little, like, message thing. And I sent it over. And I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> She's like, I thought we were writing a song together. And I was like, well, sorry. <laughs> but I don't necessarily, like, have a process. I, like... I'll go through these time spans where I have a lot of really good ideas and I'll jot them down on my phone. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll have time where I can't write anything and everything I write comes out horribly. But when I write, I normally write my songs in like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It's wow. really weird. I type it all up on my phone and then I'm done. And of course, maybe I'll go back and change a few things. But I've never really had like a process that I follow because mm -hmm. I'm kind of just... It's kind of just something that pops into my head. Yeah, yeah. and I like Catch My Name that you just played. That Thank song, you. I could hear that on the radio. Thank I mean, you. that's the catchy, I, it's in my head right now. And yeah, what, it is just catchy. Played it. <laughs> so let's talk now about Karma. That's the next one you're going to play. The yes. title suggests it might be about a guy, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess really it could be, it really is in the song, like, about a guy, mm -hmm. maybe not a guy that I know, but just for somebody or who it might needs, be, yeah, <laughs> maybe <laughs> it is that I just can't even remember right now. But it it could be like for anybody who kind of just like did something behind your back, but it really makes more sense to to sing it to a guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, y'all want to play it? Sure. sure. All right. This is Presley Sullivan live here in our studio. Take it away, girl. <laughs>
basically to full grown country already because we've been playing that <laughs> one a lot. lot. Your songs are so commercial. Did you when you were writing them, did you mean for them to be, you know, like what you hear on the radio or were you writing more just for you or um of course when I write, like I want it to turn out good, but when I write and when I wrote these songs, I wrote with just me and my guitar. So like I said, I'm not like a pro on the guitar. So it was just like simple chords, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's how I heard them with just like simple guitar backing. When I got to the studio, and I went to Johnson Brothers Studio in Covington, and John Johnson was my producer, and Daniel Addison came in on the guitar and bass, and George Sandler on the drums. When they got together in there, and they put the track together, I was, like, blown away. Because mm -hmm. the music to, was, like, exactly what I wanted, especially in Full Grown Country and Gasoline. Like, everything was just so perfect to me. So it really just brought tears to my eyes just to hear <laughs> my songs. Because I had never heard, like my song that I wrote like actually come together like that before so when I wrote it you know I never could have imagined it sounding the way it did musically wise mm -hmm. like the way they did the music was just perfect to me yeah um so I mean when I wrote it I wrote it to use like like how I use it now but I could have never Yes, that it would turn out the way it did. Yeah, because it, it, like, you're already, you've only been writing a couple years, and, like, seriously writing a couple years, and you're already putting out great stuff, mm -hmm. so keep going. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to just, like, improve. You know, you can always improve on everything you do, so I just look forward to see, like, what I'm doing in, like, five years from now, how Me my too. music comes in. I can't wait to see what she's doing, too, because she's already doing this awesome. Thank um, you. Let's talk about, this is an interesting aspect, The and that's one reason why I like having you here is being a female. Because I have guys all mm -hmm. the time in the studio, which I love all of them. They're great. But having a female artist, you can hear on the radio. Mostly you hear guys. Yeah, you, you know, do. It happens. Talk about being a female trying to break into the industry. Of course there is challenges. Like, you know, maybe some people cater more to men. And um, I think a lot of times maybe it might be easier for a guy to get banned just because, like, girls are a lot of times, like, really supportive of, like, guys or whatever. But, you know, there's a lot of people that are really supportive of girls, too. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm glad that I'm a girl in the country music industry because, to me, like, I get to pull off the attitude and the sassiness so right. much, like, easier than a guy could. <laughs> <That's right>. um, <laughs> but, I mean, I think there's pros and cons, but there's probably pros and cons of being a guy, too. Right. So, I mean, like... I'm happy I'm a girl. Yeah. <laughs> it's <awesome>. fun. <laughs> and you get to wear the cute outfits, too. Yeah. <laughs> you guys don't have a whole lot to choose from. Yeah, I like, can't, I can't, can't wear cute stuff on stage. Yeah, he does. <laughs> and we shop at the same stores. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, you're doing all these things now. You have your website, which we'll definitely mention again. But tell us now a little bit about your, your social media presence and your okay. fan base. Your website is PresleySullivan.com. Yes, my website is PresleySullivan.com, and there's links to, like, everything I have on my website. Mm -hmm. um, on Facebook, my fan page is PresleySullivan.com. And then I'm on Reverb Nation as Presley Sullivan, too. Everything that I'm on, my name is Presley Sullivan. Mm -hmm. um, iTunes, CDBaby.com, that's where you can get my music. Um, and I, I'm on Twitter, too. You can follow me on that. And um, that's about all the social media outlets that I have. I think mm -hmm. I have a LinkedIn, too. Mm -hmm. So um, I get so lost with all the social media. It's yeah. all so confusing. Yes. <laughs> that's okay. But, um, yeah, my main outlets are reverb.com, Facebook, and then my website. Right. And then, of course, like I said, you can buy my music on iTunes and CD Baby. Mm -hmm. Talk about your fan base and how it has grown, and I know you are, probably want to give a shout-out to, to yeah, your fans. Yeah, I do. Um, my fans are amazing. I mean, the things that they do and say to me, it really just amazes me. Like, um, they reach out to me and they say the sweetest things, and without them, without my fans and my family and my friends supporting me, my music would be nothing. 
and I have, you know, I have such a long way to go ahead of me, so having these people by my side where I am now, it means so much to me to see these people supporting a local girl from Loganville, Georgia, <laughs> you know, um, that hasn't gotten out there super crazy yet, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I hope that that happens one day, though. But, yeah, a few people that ask for a shout-out, and I want to shout-out to Andrew Manning, Jacob Gibbons, Robert Connor, and Cody Naismith. They are some of my top fans out there. I have so many top fans, but they asked for a shout out. So okay. there you go. Yeah, I do. It for um, and I just want to thank them for being so supportive, along with the rest of my fans and my family and friends. Yes. Because I am blessed, very. It sounds like it. And I can just tell from who you have today. Yes, have... they're all amazing in here, too. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. So let's talk about your live show. If somebody comes to watch a Presley Sullivan show, what can they expect? They'll, they can expect my originals, and I hope that they have fun, because that's my goal, is to just get everybody engaged. You know, when I'm performing, I like to try and make on, eye contact with as many people as I can. Because, if it, especially if they came out to see me, I mean, that means so much, so I want them to know that I appreciate it. Um, because they could be doing thousands of other things rather than sitting there watching me sing, so I always appreciate that. But even just people who might just be like eating dinner or just so happen to be there when I'm there, I try to like engage myself with them and introduce myself and meet them because that's how you grow your fan base. Right. Um, but I sing all my originals when I perform out, and then I do a lot of Miranda Lambert covers. Um, I do Rachel Farley, Kelly Pickler, and I'm about to expand my set list, and I want to do some like Loretta Lynn, Patsy Cline, maybe like Shania Twain or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you should. That would be cool. Yeah, and I'm wondering if they're, I'm thinking about throwing like a Pat Benatar song in there, so you maybe never go wrong if I that. can pull it off. Yes, yes. I bet Kent would like that. Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah, which one? I'm ready. Yes, yes, that would be awesome. So you have another song that you want to play, and this one, I know this is very familiar to our station because I think yes. Tony started us with this one. Yes. And then your fans have come in full force requesting it all the time. Yeah, which they're is awesome. so great. Yes, so tell us about Full Grown Country and okay. how it came to be. Full Grown Country is the title track on my album, and um, I always call it my anthem. People are probably so tired of hearing me say that, because I say it every time, but it's true. Like, I wrote Full Grown Country about myself, if that sounds silly, you know, I don't know, but it's just the way I view myself, and I wrote it for all the people out there that want to call themselves Full Grown Country, too. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess we'll play that one for y'all, and hope y'all enjoy that one. <laughs> Could tell that I really don't care. 